Have you ever heard of forensic investigators? My name is Marie, and I'm one of them. At the age of 12, I discovered my curiosity and my huge passion for finding the facts that matters. I was determined to become a public prosecutor when grown up. And this is how my professional career started at the age of 26 as a public prosecutor. For the next six years, dawn raids, autopsies, and court hearings were part of my daily doing. Today, I do no longer work on behalf of the authorities, but on behalf of companies. The moment there's concrete suspicions of wrongdoing, I investigate whether it can be corroborated or invalidated. But what exactly does that have to do with awareness and sensitivity? Well, when I started as an investigator, I essentially processed white color crime case, um, cases, such as fraud, infidelity, or embezzlement. These cases had in common that they had already caused great financial damage to the companies. Today, another field comes into focus misconduct in dealings with one another in the workplace. When certain behaviors in the workplace cause personal boundaries to be crossed, consciously or unconsciously, meaning practices such as discrimination, mobbing, bossing, sexual harassment. In times of ESG, Me Too movement, the Whistleblower Protection Act, and the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, a culture change and rethink are taking place. Victims and witnesses are encouraged to speak up and report those incidents. At the same time, corporate leaders are more sensitive and recognize that they need to take action in this area too. But what are we talking about in concrete terms? The common element of all these behaviors is belittlement or exclusion of individuals. It is typically manifested as an expression of power imbalance, power abuse, a hierarchy gap. It can occur in verbal or physical forms ranging from inappropriate verbal or written remarks to so-called locker room chats and the failure to maintain physical and personal boundaries. Both women and men are affected. For example, in the case of sexism, meaning the unequal treatment based on gender, st studies say that 49% of men and 63% of women have experienced sexism at least once in their lifetime. Besides ethical and moral reasons, why is it especially important in these cases for companies as employers to take action? Imagine a triangle consisting of the following corners. Employers, employees, the public and external stakeholders like investors, clients, suppliers. For employees, those incidents have huge negative impacts on their performance, on the productivity, on the motivation. These incidents potentially lead to reduced capacity for innovation psychological distress. They can also have a negative impact on the workplace culture and finally lead to increased turnover rates. Whenever disappointed employees leave their former employer, there exist different virtual channels through which they can vent their anger and frustration. Social media, job portals, and we all know rumors, no matter of if true or false, nowadays spread fast and far. So there's a huge risk of negative headlines, which can lead to influential judgments, public outrage, and long-lasting reputational damage. 
and not to forget the external stakeholders. More than 70% of institutional investors nowadays lay emphasis on ESG criteria for their decision-making process. Also, suppliers fear risk of not fulfilling their due diligence obligations when contracting with those parties. So, bottom line, besides ethical and moral reasons, there's a huge financial one. But what exactly is being done as part of an internal investigation? The objective of the investigation is to fully understand what exactly took place. Who acted, when, where, and especially why could this incident happen? To obtain an overall picture, we conduct interviews with all the persons involved, we evaluate email communication, chat communication, and we conduct uh, researches in social media. Of course, um, the evidence available always depends on the individual case. But in the end, the goal is to prepare a fact-based report that can be used in court. But it doesn't have to come that far. In many of these cases, clarifying conversations can already bring about a change in behavior. As mostly, communication is key. Oftentimes, the alleged persons are not even aware of how their behaviors affect others. They have always acted that way in the past, and no one had the courage to point out to them that this is perceived as inadequate or even encroaching. For this reason, it is all the more important for corporate leaders, for the top management, to exemplify an appreciative corporate culture via tone from the top. In the best case, as a preventive strategic measure or as a learning experience from a specific incident. Companies need common values and guidelines on how they want to achieve their goals, especially the financial ones. As far as interaction with each other is concerned, in times of constant change and an increasingly diverse workforce, it is becoming more and more important to create awareness for the benefit of diversity and sensitivity for the needs of others. So I ask you all, be bold and speak up for yourself and for everyone else if you feel that they are in need of your voice. Thank you. <laughs>